Steinberg, and I'm teaching at the Impulse Dance Festival in Vienna. And I teach two classes. One is an advanced Limon class, and one is a beginner class, which to me is just beginning dancing. I may use the principles of Limon because I think that they make for a better dancer and easier to absorb information, but it's not necessarily Limon. Yes. You have been coming here for a long time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure the exact. I think it's either 14 or 15 years. Wow. So, yeah, which is great. I mean, it's an honor to be asked back that often. Yes. And how do you approach, uh, you know, in, the, in this time that I call formerly known dance? <laughs> <laughs> you know... Uh, oh, <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> you know, the, your... You know, how, how do you approach even the beginning or the professionals and the idea, you know, our approximations to Limon technique? Well, I think oh, that's a great and a hard question. I, you know, I, I teach Limon. I, I teach Limon not because I know it. I teach Limon because I think it's those principles that make you a better dancer no matter what you're doing. And I believe that. And if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't teach it because hmm. I, I, I'm not mercenary and I would figure out something else or I wouldn't teach. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's challenging. I'm always, to be honest, nervous when I come here because, hmm. let's see, what am I? The formerly known as dance, or <laughs> which is better than old fashioned. Um, <laughs> But even in all the work that I see they're doing, all the floor work and all the propelling through space, the fundamentals of what makes a good dancer to me are the same. Yeah. And um, if you don't know where your anatomy is going in space, if you're not working with breath, if you're not working with direction, focus, hmm. initiation, intention, hmm. then... For me, that's not so interesting. Yeah, so. then, uh, I was going to ask, but you name it, some of them. So that's perhaps certain things that are fundamental directions of, uh, or things that we can identify in a good contemporary dancer or, or the dancer of our times. Yeah, and so it was interesting, at the end of the advanced class yesterday, when I, when I was saying goodbye to them, I asked them to not think about the steps we were doing, mm. but thinking about the tools that allowed them to do them. Mm -hmm. Because steps are steps, mm -hmm. but how, the how you do them, it's no different than the how you speak. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what makes, for me, communication interesting. Mm -hmm. You could use a whole bunch of big words and have no dynamic range, have no intention, have no, mm -hmm. I'm not going to care. You could use simple words, but have a lot of, of those things and that contain it, that, that put it in the frame, and I will listen to you for hours. So I feel very much that same way in dance. Yeah. And what is then in the Limon technique, let's say, that, that you feel that aim directly to that? Because, you know, with you, it was like many years ago that the first time that I danced with imagery directly. Oh, wow. You know, it was yeah. like in Venezuela, it was like this moment of dancing with your name or mm -hmm. dancing with that you are an essence, that there's a smell coming out of your, a good <laughs> perfume. You know, so that was a long time ago. But, you know, what, what are then certain characteristics of what you happen to be teaching now? Well, I, you know, I, I think if we really are talking about Jose specifically, I mean, his whole intention was the humanity mm -hmm. of being an artist. And I think that that's really very important. And so, you know, I think that the the language, the vocabulary that people are using today, I think, you know, it's extraordinary, all of the flow work and propelling yourself up and mm -hmm. down. I still think, if, you know, how you do that is very important, and as, you know, anybody would agree, I think. And so I think Lamone talks about moving from the bones and moving mm -hmm. with dynamic range and fall and rebound or release and... Mm. Opposition, you know, however, whatever the words are that you want mm. to do it. There's surely the language of Limon that, you know, the weight of every part of your body and using gravity. Mm. And, and when, when gravity, you know, we all work with momentum. Mm. You know, if I have anything I would like to say to 
people who teach the work of today, is that momentum is an extraordinary thing. It's also potentially incredibly dangerous. And if you don't know where momentum is coming from and where it's taking you to, and yeah. you're not responsible for those two places, yeah. then, then I think the dancer has less capacity to know what they want to say because they're, they're just trying to hold on to some sense of safety. Hmm. And I think the, the thing, the, one of the ideas that I love so much about Lamon and how it attaches itself to contemporary or release technique hmm. is that it really does come from a place of opposition. And then it's completely free mm -hmm. <laughs> in the fall, and then it goes to another sense of opposition. But what we do know, and I talk about this all the time, is what the track is of the body part that's free. Mm -hmm. Like, where is it in space? Yeah. And I, I choose to think where it is in space is important. That doesn't mean anybody else has to, but I think it's important. Yeah, and and then how do you think? How do you relate technique with kind of aesthetics of, of style? And do you think that our ideas of virtuosity are changing? You know, because there are a lot of work that we see from that is fascinating to be here also to see extremely conceptual work, wherever that we don't see something that we can directly see as dance is more like a contemporary performance in which there is movement, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then something that are perhaps more traditionally identified with dance. So how, 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 how do you think that is, is the, our idea of taste in all this? Mm. Well, I think there's no generation that doesn't have the traditional and the new, mm. I think. Yeah. You know, Jose used to say modern dance, which was modern then, <clears throat> its responsibility is to be a reflection of the times. Mm. And you know, if he were alive today, who knows what he'd be creating. Yes. Right? <laughs> so I do think a lot of the work is a reflection of the times. You know, one of the things that I feel strongly about is I think there are two words that I love. Well, there are many words I love, but two particularly. I love the word work and mm. I love the word technique. <laughs> and I think both, no matter what you do, there's a technique of doing it. There's a technique to baking a cake, there's a technique to making a bed, mm -hmm. there's a technique to putting your leg in space. Mm -hmm. And because I'm invested in dancers being able to um, dance for however long they want, mm -hmm. uh, the technique of how you do whatever you're doing is incredibly important to me. Mm. So if you're going down to the floor, then you want to know where is your knee in that activity. Mm. Yeah. Um, because if not, then you yeah. know, then then you'll be good for the moment, but you may not be good for the next moment. And yeah. there's there's no guarantee, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? The body wears down, and we know that. But yeah. I think being conscious. In, physically is really important. So I know that the word technique is not mm. such a um, loved word mm, mm. today, but I actually, yeah. you know, I think I would, I would die without technique. <laughs> yeah, it's like we may not be out of it, never. You know, it's just we probably may not be aware, <laughs> but that we're always within certain kind of, certain kind of design context or, yeah. or, 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 or trainings, you know, or getting right. used to it. So I, I, I think it's just to figure out how... How you get people to speak what you want them to say, you know, and that is, for me, that's the definition of technique, the yeah. how of something. How do I do that? Yeah, yeah, it's a, come from the techne word that is, it means uh -huh. uh, skill. Right. So, right. Yeah. And then, uh, how, you know, you mentioned this, uh, I remember you dancing uh, six solos, mm -hmm. probably it was 10 years, 15 years ago or something like that, that, that was Annabella Gamson and uh, yeah, Sabra Duncan. Right. So, and then, you know, what is your you know, perspective and relationship to, to perhaps dance and longevity, and longevity you know, or the, mm -hmm. the longevity of the performer? And, uh, you know, how, how, how that... Uh, extremely challenging, I would remember, but incredibly fluid dancing that happened when I saw it is with you now. So it's like how, you know, like how do you want to keep keep performing or is that something that 
is a question for you because I've been trying to research as I am also, you know, we're all aging and I'm aging. So it's a question that I always have in relationship to how do we keep performing? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, things are changing and things always change and some change is easier than others. Um, surely, you know, when I watch other classes of, you know, very physical contemporary dancers, I wish I were. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wish I were a younger dancer today, but, you know, I try hard to kind of restrain myself from doing that. <laughs> that's kind of an absurd... Let's go do parkour. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not going to put a gun to my head. But surely I, I surely do not feel finished as a performer. Finding things that I feel are appropriate for me, mm -hmm. or that's, that's much more the question, you know, mm -hmm. I am surely not, um, you know, I probably perform, you know, 20 out of 24 hours a day in my life, because mm -hmm. that's, you know, I don't think it's on stage, off stage, I mm -hmm. think you are mm -hmm. that, that's great. <laughs> right, so, so it's really, it's finding, finding people, finding situations mm -hmm. that would make it um, right for for all involved, you know. Yes. Uh, have you, this is kind of the last question, have, mm -hmm. what have you felt it has changed in your years of a, as a teacher? You know, like how, do you think that now, for example, how you're teaching now, has something changed or something that you feel like are more fundamental now? Yeah, I actually think I'm, I'm more basic now than I ever, I ever was in some ways. I mean, I think I've always been detailed. Mm -hmm. Like I really, I, I'm, this is, this is a problem as well as a good thing. I can't be in a class with students and not take care if I see something's not going well. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just have a hard time with it. So it makes me incredibly picky and probably a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> but I really, I just feel so, I, I, I feel so responsible when people mm. walk in and say here's your body and mm. I did it you know for years right mm. and you just walk in and with this with this absolute trust you give your bodies mm. to people and I think that is such a huge responsibility um, yeah and so I think of anything I just take I just take that even more seriously even though I, mm. I've always thought it I think now I just really think wow you know, here are these X numbers of people who have just said, okay, here, here we are. Yeah. do my body. Yeah. And huh. I just, I'm blown away by that trust. And then I'm also blown away by the responsibility of it. Yeah. Ah, brings well, tears to my eyes. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're yeah, welcome. it's an enormous responsibility and, and uh, giving, I would say. You know, it's also a very generous moment. Oh. Yeah, well, thank I, you. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you.